If you're into reptiles, you have undoubtedly heard of the brand Zoomed. They make a wide range of reptile products from decor to food to lighting and everything in between. Well, today, Ed and I are in California and we have the amazing opportunity to tour Zoomed headquarters. We're gonna start our tour today with Jen, who is part of the animal care and the customer service department, which is in the same room. Yep. So I've gotta ask you, why combine animal care and customer service, like to those two departments, which you wouldn't think would be combined, but they're together here. It helps give us a lot of credibility. Having both the okay. animal care as well as customer service, our desks are all in this room. So we take a phone call, we're doing stuff in this room, we're working with the products, and somebody calls about a product, we can tell them, hey, well, we're using this product with the animals here too and this is what we do with it so it just it makes it to where we can actually help the customers out a lot more when they're calling in being that we actually do hands-on a lot of stuff with the products that they use. Would you say your job is 50-50 animal care and customer service? Some days it might skew a little bit more 60% animals 40% customer service or 70% customer service and 30% animal care so okay, it just so depends on the day and you have a headset on you so you yes. are like taking calls while yes. you are actively caring for animals too right yes yeah there are a lot of days where I'm either doing water changes cleaning filters or doing food prep and I've got to tell the customer hey I gotta go wash my hands before I can go to my desk and, and help you out or I'm chasing animals across the floor who I have just let out <laughs> oh yeah I, I can relate to that so yes you're doing customer service while catching a lizard sometimes yes, so. yes. I have made quite a few customers the last few weeks giggles uh, as I'm chasing something across the floor so That's amazing <laughs> what's your favorite species in this room honestly I the Cuban false chameleons but I'm really partial to Euromastix so oh, really that's they've been my baby since I got my first one 17 years ago okay so and there's a little bit of I mean there's a lot of both of those there's euros and false chameleons which we love we work with false <laughs> chameleons too but there's a ton of other species in here yeah. too so like, why the huge variety or what makes everybody the team decide on each species well we get to decide on our favorites but actually the collection here is um, the owners so okay. it's what he wants to have in here so nice. sometimes we get to be like, hey, can we maybe get some of these? But for the most part, a lot of them are animals that he's really interested in. And so that's why we have them here in the collection. Awesome. And one more thing I'm noticing while we're in here is there's a lot of Zoomed products in these <laughs> enclosures, which makes sense. And I assume is that a lot of R&D or research and development that's happening in this room too? It's oh, not just yes. taking care of animals? Yes. A lot of the R&D does happen in this room. We all the time we're we're doing something and we're like hey this would be a really cool product if we had it so that's a lot of what hmm. um, ends up happening is one of the things also is some of our glass tanks it's like hey we have this space let's make a tank that fits in this space and then all of a sudden it's a new product because somebody else sees it and it's like hey we should make that so a lot of the stuff that we do is yeah is R&D is definitely very very involved in this room a lot. I love how it's all tied together though with the customer service the R&D and animal care mm -hmm. and this isn't your only animal care room right no not at all we call this our showroom and then we also have an animal room that we call back there, which is a little warmer. So we have a lot more of our hatchlings, like aquatic turtles and tortoises and stuff like that in that room. We have a greenhouse outside, which oh we gosh. also have a lot more turtles and tortoises in. And then we also have our own incubation room here. So we have a lot of areas that house a lot of different animals. Can we go to the next room? Yeah. Let's go. Okay, we are now in the second animal room with Ashley, who is going to teach us a little bit about what happens in here. My first question is, what species or what animals do you keep in this room? So in this room, we have a lot of turtles and tortoises, a lot of babies actually that really? um, that hatch right here. Uh, wow. Behind us, you'll see all of these. Um, these are mostly hatchling tanks, and they're growing up. Uh, we've got more utilitarian type habitats um, as opposed to the really naturalistic habitats that we have out in the other room. But yeah, lots lots and lots of turtles and tortoises. We have some really unique species of turtles and tortoises in here too. Like there's spiny hill, spinny, spiny? Spiny, spiny, spiny hill, hill turtles. Turtle. There's a bunch of box turtles in here. There's pancake tortoises in here. Pancakes are one of my favorite. Really? I just love them. There's yeah. a lot of cool species in this room. Like it's, we'll try to show as many as we can to, for, to you guys. Um, but what products are getting tested using these animals? We test all of our products in house on our animals after we've made sure that it's safe and effective. Yep. Um, we make sure that the animals 
know what to do with it and how to use it and everything. So in here specifically, we're standing in the kitchen area where we prepare our diets and we have a lot of our, um, our foods that are tested in here, pelleted diets, vitamins and things like that. Okay. We also test a lot of filtration equipment, mm -hmm. pumps, and uh, and lighting, heating elements. Really? Those kind of things. Oh, like the, oh, I suppose with turtles, it's you do a lot of UVB testing in here, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, we make sure that using our spectrometer and UVB meters and everything, that Ooh. the light that's created is safe and effective. And then we put it over the animal's habitats to make sure that Ooh. they're reacting accordingly to, um, to the addition of those lights. Can we see where you do all your light work next? Yeah, that's uh, right back there. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, we got distracted on our way to the light room with pancake tortoises, which we learned is Ashley's specialty here. And she is teaching us so much off camera about pancake tortoises that we figured we would include this in the video too. Yep, pancake tortoises are just, they're one of my favorites. They're so unique. This is a full grown, um, this is an adult female. She's only about seven inches long, about an inch tall and uh, soft, actually. This species oh. comes, yeah, do you wanna feel? Like squishy. Oh my gosh, and, show the squishy. And usually if you saw a squishy tortoise, I, like, I would freak out. Because yeah, right, that's right. not what you want. It feels wrong almost, it's so squishy. Yeah, but, um, but this species comes from the savanna in Africa and they spend their time in kopis, which are rocky outcroppings. Okay. Um, they're really fast, they have long legs, they can climb almost vertical wall. And if they flip over, they can right themselves. You can see how flexible the legs are and, oh and long. They don't have that big domed heavy shell to carry around, so they're mm. super speedy. And to protect oh themselves, gosh. instead of withdrawing into the shell, they will just run for the hills if they're really? danger. And they literally get themselves into a crevice between the rocks and they'll wedge themselves in with their legs. They can't be extracted at that point, and that's where they're safe. So I just think they're so they're so special and unique. They're also pretty gregarious. They hang out in groups because okay. their hiding space is somewhat limited. That's uh, true. They kind of share a hole sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah. And so they live well in groups. They're just really, really neat animals. I can't get over them. They're my favorite. I had no idea about all these cool things about them. And the babies, it looks like they have a bit more domed of a shell. Do they kind of grow into that pancake look? Mm hmm Yeah, as when they're babies, they're definitely a little bit thicker, um, but I feel like that thickness like almost won't grow. It'll just grow more around. Right, yeah, they kind of grow yeah. outwards uh -huh. from the center, almost, yeah. you know. <laughs> and they're, um, they're, pattern you can see is unique. Every single one has a different color. Oh, You'll yeah. see some with a lot more dark, some with lots of yellow. Um, they're just oh they're gosh. just really, really cool animals. And uh, we've been really successful breeding them here. And did I overhear you call them the, or some people call them the soft shell a tortoise? soft shell tortoise, because also of the... known yeah, as a crevice tortoise. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've wow. got a few names. I call them pancakes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, Andrew is the lighting expert here at ZooMed, and I am curious though, for being the lighting guy, this is the, the darkest room of the building, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, a lot of our like light testing happens in-house here, and uh, the first thing we do when we're running like a spectral analysis of a bulb with our like spectrometer that we've got here is all the lights come off, you isolate your light source. Uh, oh, so it's supposed to be dim. Yeah, oh, yeah, for you, light testing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's just enough to read and write by, and then everything gets shut off before you, you know, get a, an analysis of a single bulb. Um, but yeah, we've got like a lot of tools here to check and QC a lot of, uh, you know, different lamps that we've got available. So usually, like a manufacturer has spectral analysis done on their bulb. Yeah. Um, we double check that, you know, with our own equipment here, and then also use like third party testing to triple verify um, that a bulb's performing the way it should be. And so that's, so you do the testing in-house for the basking and the UVB and just, just all the bulbs that you guys carry? Yeah, yeah, we've got like hmm. infrared imaging equipment, we've got wow. uh, spectral analysis that's tuned for UVB, UVA, and visible oh light. Um, we've got like a, a accelerated lamp life rack test here that you can use uh, two 230 volt and 120 volt so our European lamps and our US spec lamps we can run accelerated life testing on those to make sure they're behaving the way they should. This room is also like split down the middle here we've got 120 volt US spec stuff and then this half of the room is, is all 230 volt lamps. 
Is that what this is? That, it's, yeah, it's that explains silly the, looking plug. the EU plugs or UK plugs. Um, oh, this the, is the UK plug? Really? All the UK ones, even blockier than that. This is our like EU, but they use the same voltage. So yeah, wow. that's, uh, that's how we test on this half of the room, um, all that's lamps weird. that are to those spec and then huh. yeah, US spec on the, the rear half of the room. I wouldn't have even thought of that though. Like you have your own products, but then you also have to create the plugs and the rest of the product itself for each country and based on what they use. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's insane. So how does testing work with the UVB bulbs? Um, so we'll use handheld meters like our um, little 6.5 UV index radiometers. Is um, this can, guy? Yep. Okay. You can use those to measure the intensity of the UV at a given distance to, you know, have okay. recommendations for distance uh, for certain lamps and different species, you know, how, how to get a higher intensity or lower intensity and how far you've got to be to achieve that. Um, and That's then, really cool. And then you test the like safety and efficacy of the UV spectrum with like your, your spectral analysis software. So you've got two different methods of, uh, of checking that sort of thing, you know, intensity and then huh. where on the spectrum um, that lamps or radiance is. There were a lot of big words there that I didn't understand, <laughs> but I'm going to assume that all made sense to some people watching. <laughs> Thank you so much for yeah. your information on the lighting room here. Yeah. I did not realize you did so much testing, actually. Oh, yeah. A lot, a lot of equipment in one little room. Okay, we're back in the animal room, and now I'm joined by Miranda, who works on the formulated diets with ZoomEd. So, first question for you, since a lot of keepers use, like, fresh food and live food for their, say, bearded dragons, yeah. why does ZoomEd work so hard and focus on the pelleted diets? Yeah. Yeah, so one reason is it's easier for people to have something that's shelf stable and just provide that for their animal, especially if you're having somebody, you know, care for your animal while you're gone. Sometimes prepping a salad plate's a little too much work. Another reason is because sometimes it's really hard to get the appropriate diet from what's available in the supermarket. You know, there's not enough calcium, phosphorus. There's definitely enough phosphorus, sorry. Yep. <laughs> uh, not enough calcium. Um, and fiber is another thing that's hard to get into these diets from a commercial um, like lettuce and romaine just doesn't have enough fiber. Okay. Um, so that would definitely be a benefit for the pellets. So you, um, yeah, so you're able to put exactly what nutrients and vitamins you need into those pellets. Exactly. Are they palatable? Like, do the reptiles seem to like them too? Yeah, so uh, that's actually why this diet took so long, is that we wanted to make sure that it was palatable. So I spent about a year testing out different ingredients. Oh um, yeah, really? Yeah, so I did a bunch of uh, palatability trials where I did one plate of one ingredient, one plate of another, just to make sure all the ingredients that were going in it they liked so that's what helped me determine what ingredients to use and then uh, they're put in proportions that are appropriate for their diet okay and you were referring to the brand new bearded dragon palette that just came out right yes that's correct. okay okay yes. yeah so yes, we're so. doing something called dragon food um, so it's in an adult formula and also a juvenile formula okay so they'll have the same ingredients but in those different proportions that I just talked about um, mm -hmm. what's appropriate for a juvenile versus an adult awesome mm -hmm. and it looks like she might be ready for her meal today she's been yeah. begging this entire time she's yeah. been like right behind the glass she absolutely loves this food so we do mix in fresh veggies because that um, oh, cool. provides enrichment where they get to pick out different things from their diet um, so we do offer that on the first day and then we let them um, forage for another day before we remove the plate okay uh, we also include live insects in her diet that's mostly for exercise bearded dragons can get really overweight as I'm sure you know Oh, yeah. adults. Yes. Yeah. So we do encourage to feed live insects so that they can get that exercise. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So this formula, this brand new bearded dragon formula is like your baby. Yeah. And it's finally coming to market. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, oh a year gosh. of just testing ingredients and then probably another year of just testing the final diet that we came out with. Wow. Um, so this lady right here um, has actually grown up solely on this diet. So we, we've also incorporated the greens and insects like I talked about, but the majority of her diet is the new dragon food. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm super excited. <laughs> for it to come out. Okay, everybody got calls all of a sudden, so yeah. we're, we're by ourselves They're now. They're working. So we're exploring, and we found, I think, a sh like a showroom? Yeah. I don't know, look at all this. I, I think this is what they use to like, d make a display shelf for a retail store? It looks like it to me. Probably. Yeah. What do you think is in here? I don't know. Should we go in? There is a sign that just says no flash photography, so. That doesn't mean no Ed or Emily's. Yeah, it's true. What's oh in here? My, oh my gosh. <gasps> oh, those look like incubators. This is their incubator room. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Oh, is there a lot in there? Oh. Holy moly, there's Holy. a ton of things in there. Oh, they're all labeled too. Spotted turtle, Florida box turtle, uh, water dragon eggs. Oh my gosh. Wow. Florida box turtle. Look at all that. Holy. Okay, I don't want that to yeah, be open. Yeah, we don't want to leave that open too long. Is there anything that's hatched over here or any babies? Do you think we'd get that lucky? I mean, oh, we're not usually that lucky. Look at all these incubators. There's 
<gasps> oh my gosh, in there? there's babies in this one. Uh-oh. Anybody coming? Nope, nobody's coming, go. Oh my gosh. These are baby pink-bellied side neck turtles. Oh, look at that. These like just hatched, I bet. Oh my How many are goodness. There? Uh, four and one. One Wait, escaped it? One, one is in here. Here, <laughs> come back. He's like, you can't contain me. You have to be with your friends. He's like, I don't like my friends. Here you go, go back with your friends. Oh That's my gosh. That's the end of the group. Yep. <laughs> okay, well we found their incubator room where yeah. they have hundreds of, of eggs. Tons of eggs and incubators. That's awesome. I didn't know they bred so much, to be honest. No, I didn't either. Okay, let's yeah, sneak back out sneak away before so they catch us. Get in trouble? Yeah. Okay. okay, we are going to finish our tour at ZooMed in their greenhouse, which is, I guess, where we, they keep even more animals and plants. And this is where a lot of their breeders are. So that'll be kind of cool. Hey guys, uh, we're, we're in the greenhouse now. Where you guys been? Uh, we don't, I don't have turtles in my purse. Don't look. What? What? It's uh, really warm in here. This place is huge. There's a giant green iguana over here. Oh my gosh, hi buddy. Or an orange iguana, He's gonna get technical. Beautiful. Wow, you're massive. Wow, yeah, he is impressive. This is a ginormous green. This is a lot bigger than our greenhouse at the yes, facility. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, there's Meredith. We should ask what, what they use this place for. All right. Oh, you've got red foot tortoises. Yes, we do. Oh. These are one of my favorite species here. They're just so personable. They always try to come up to you and eat your shoelaces when you come into their habitat. <laughs> and something that I think is really cool about them is that they make like a clucking sound when they're breeding. Oh really? Yeah, it almost sounds like a chicken. It's super cool. I did not know that about them. Oh my gosh. I remember the first time that I heard it, I like came out here and like, is because we have chickens. I'm like, is that a chicken that got into the greenhouse? And nope, it was, we it was just, the tortoises. So, <laughs> so they don't do the, no, nope. <laughs> nope. Not, yeah. not the red foots. Yeah, and they go crazy for um, these hibiscus that we grow in here too. So we have one cool. in every pen and we offer them as snacks for all of the uh, tortoises and box turtles that we have in here. Are these like breeding adults then? Like these yes. are producing for you mm -hmm. and wow. Yeah, that is so cool. And these guys are notorious for hiding their eggs super well. Like they'll pat <laughs> down the ground and you'll have no idea that they laid any eggs until you like dig with a shovel oh, or you have to catch them in the act. So you have to like hand excavate all their eggs. Yeah, and for these Hope guys. you find them all. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, they're super cool. All right, so red foot. What yeah. else is in here? A bunch of aquatic. Oh, I bet these are the parents of the pink belly side oh, mix. Probably that aren't in your purse. Yeah, no, definitely not in my purse right now. Oh, come on, I can't see you. It's too bright. <laughs> Focus behind. There, there. They're there. They're there. That's all yeah, you need to know. Turtles galore. Tortoises and box turtles galore. Yeah, box turtles. More box turtles. Look at all the mangrove trees in yeah, here. Yeah, these are so cool. I like there's like the roots that just grow down into the soil. Yeah, there's so many live plants in here. It's humid. Yeah. This is crazy. More. Oh, there's um three toed box turtles. Aw. Cool. Hey, little dudes. Okay, let's see what Ashley's up to in here. Okay, what are you up to? I am looking for snake neck turtles. Oh. Hang on, oh. I think I see one. Yep. Just you just go for it. You have to. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. Look at that. So this is neck. one of our Sybin Rock snake neck turtles. They're native to New Guinea. They're named obviously for the length of the, the neck here. They're super predators. They've got this like super fast action. Oh, Gotta hold him like this or he'll kick me right off. Um, he can snap his neck out so fast to catch fish. Really cool turtle. These guys are related to pigus in the pigu family and they're very sweet and they're very friendly. Um, they have such a wide range of personalities, why they're some of my favorites. Um, and they're some of our moodier animals. It's been really interesting um, as a person interested in animal behavior to get to know their moods even from like hour to hour, day to day. You know, sometimes they're really energetic, sometimes they're lazy. Um, so right now we're just trying to see if they're interested in eating uh, any of their silkworms for us. And no, he, uh, they'll give us pretty clear signals when they're not hungry. He just like closed his eyes and <laughs> wouldn't really look at me. Normally when they're interested they'll like come right up and sometimes they'll even kind of climb out uh, for snuggle time. 
Well, that concludes our tour of the epic ZooMed headquarters. ZooMed. ZooMed! We got to see it in person. That yeah. was so cool. There was even a lot more that we just didn't have time to film. Like, they do a lot of packaging in-house and making of products in-house. Like, they, they bag soil here. They package their food products. They make, you know, the lizard hammocks from ZooMed? They stitch those together here in the building. Yeah. Like, I, that's, it's amazing how they much they do. They have a glass building nearby. A whole glass. They have a food yeah. building nearby. Nearby. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot more to it than even just what we had time to film today But we want to thank everybody for watching today's video I hope you learned something new and Ed and I had a great time This was so much fun to be able to see uh, what zoom is so cool like to see all the animals Yeah, it was fun meeting everybody. They have a great team here and we'd like to thank uh, zoom Ed themselves for bringing us here to show us their epic facilities um, Yeah, well, this is something we will never forget. So thank you everybody for watching. Thank you patreon backers for your amazing support as always. Thank you again to ZooMed and the entire team at ZooMed for your time and for showing us around and we'll see you next time. ZooMed.